right? The clowns. The jugglers. That is excellent. So what does this word say? Rainbow. That's excellent. Number two. Monkey went over the r river. Number three. Monkey went over. Right. What do you think that is? Good girl for Giovanna. So, what do you think it says? Lid. Lid. Good girl. Children at our school always want to come to school. Yes. They'll be out In New Zealand, kindergarten is more than a place where small children are nursed. It's like a greenhouse for the smallest plants. Here, the learning process begins and everything is carefully coordinated with what will take place later at school. According to the law, all must start school when they turn six. Most, however, start as soon as they turn five. It's my last day at school today. Why? Because I'm nearly five, one more sleep. And what happens after your birthday? Um, then I go to my big school. The philosophy and necessity of daycare, as known in Europe, is virtually unknown. 40% of women stay home and take part in children's activities, especially on the last day of kindergarten. Daycare for five-year-olds is outside the philosophy in a system which focuses on the quality and content of education and where the staff in both kindergarten and schools are all teachers working with identical principles. We want to gain a system where it flows automatically and leads from one education point to another point instead of having a disjoint break and then children go to another system or another school and so on. We're hopeful that we'll get that with this continuous curriculum. There's lovely flowers and there's lovely flowers on them. Turning five is very special. Michaela has prepared herself for that day. She has already visited her new school a couple of times. Still, it's a huge change for a small person. Michaela is how old is she? Five. Five. And what do you do when you're five? Go to school. You go to school. And Michaela's going to go to school on Monday. Which school are you going to go to, Michaela? Curry Curry Mary Mary Primary. Yes. <laughs> do you remember when you started school? Yeah. What was that like? It was scary. Why? I didn't know anybody. Do you think it to all children in New Zealand is a special day to become five? Yes, definitely. It's very special to be able to come five, knowing that you'll be like um, at school and new, meeting lots of new people. It's very exciting, yes, and I think it's quite important. I was real excited. Why? Because I wanted to go to school. Did you like it? Um, not really, but I got used to it. We want to do well with children, we want children to be successful, we want their self-esteem levels to be high and we want to let them know that, they, that they're succeeding, even if it's only in something small. That the, you know, we, we want to, to be positive with them and to let them know that they can do something well, that they're valued and they're important. It's early on Monday morning. Teacher Anne-Marie Quinn is on her way to school. She will be in the class one hour before the kids arrive at nine. Shall we have a good weekend? And she doesn't leave till five, spending the afternoons planning her programmes and talking to colleagues. The hour before the children all arrive is important. It leaves time for the last preparations and to talk to the kids and their parents in a relaxed atmosphere, a contact often missing in European schools where teachers are stressed and work our regulations impractical. Morning. Hi there, Georgia. Hi, Sandra. How are you doing today? Good. Carl, how would you like to go pop these into the fairies' reading box for me? Okay. Just. Anne Marie Quinn gets a new pupil today. Michaela starts in her class. Oh, hi there, Michaela. 
How are you doing today there, sweetie? Did you have a nice bir birthday? That's good. Would you go along with Shawnee and have a look at some puzzles, okay? So where we go? All right then, okay, bye, we'll see you. See you. Yeah. Michaela's future starts today. School from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for years to come. Anne-Marie Quinn started her school year on February 1st with only three pupils. Then came one more, then another, one by one. Today, she has 20. This system gives the teacher the chance to create her own culture in the class and to get to know each child and the parents. But it is demanding. She will teach various levels at the same time and gets help from parents. Okay, good girl, you put down that sound. Can't that be too early to start school for a child? No, I think um, michaela has been more than ready for it. Uh, the preschool has, um, has helped in, in encouraging her um, and, and getting her right for, the, for that day. And I, at five, she's, she's more than ready to learn and, and, sp and concentrate on those things. She's, she's ready, yeah. Five's not too early. Michaela's school is located in a rather affluent neighbourhood in New Zealand's biggest city, Auckland. It's home to a quarter of New Zealand's four million strong population. New Zealand is a proud multi-ethnic society, although there are still conflicts between Europeans and Maoris. Immigration from China, Korea, Polynesia and South Africa over the last few years has stressed the school system, since most of these children do not speak English. Indendale Primary School her i Auckland er en skole med 710 elever. Det er en skole, hvor der går børn fra 32 forskellige lande, og skolen er absolut en af de allerbedste i New Zealand. Rosemary Vivian works here. She has visited Denmark several times to talk about her school and the New Zealand system, and the school is a magnet for teachers from abroad who are keen to study the system. The kids learn to spell the words as they hear them. Classrooms. Good girl. What a really good try. Well done, Mukta. So there's always a focus on the positive. We focus on what the children do well, and what they can do already, and what they need to do next. But don't you ever tell them what they're not good at? No. Why not really? That's not part of the philosophy of the way we, we look at education. We look at children as all being good at doing something, no matter how small that little step of learning is, and that they can do something that that they can learn something better, so that we're looking at what they can do and what they need to know next. We don't look at what they're not able to do. When the kids have finished a sentence, the teacher focuses on the correct letters, and the correct word is written beneath. The basic principle is to motivate and to stimulate the children to love to learn. A reassuring environment is a precondition for success and the teachers follow clearly defined and identical ways in dealing with the children. Two O's. That says Rob. Niddy, can you help me with Al? Oh, good girl. Well done. What about bullies and those children whose behaviour disrupts teaching? How do they handle them in New Zealand? The types of programmes that are offered for children in the schools help them to succeed and they help them to want to learn. So generally we don't have children like that who, you know, who, who stick out. So the children are, are taught to be nice to each other, and, and they are. So we don't, we don't have children who you would say are the, are the naughty children. We don't classify children like that, and the programs don't. Programs that they work at don't um, encourage children to, to be naughty. But do they exist at Kohimarama Primary? No. <laughs> and as, as, a, as a teacher, um, as, a, as a teacher of 20 plus children, um, my main way of maintaining a quiet noise level is to have activities and programs and um, um, projects going on in my class where they are busy enjoying themselves doing those that they just don't have the desire or time or need to be making a lot of rackets, basically. Don't you have to shout loud sometimes to make them quiet? No, I, I, don't, I don't believe that that's uh, an appropriate way of channeling children's behavior. Um, I, I know 
that with myself and with a, a number of other teachers that if I if my tone is quiet and friendly that that's the type of response that I get from the children. Even though Anne-Marie Quinn is delayed after recess, teaching has started. The kids organize themselves. And in the second grade, next door, the kids are being taught on the floor, like in all schools. When they do work at tables, they have no regular seats. They write at one table, read at another. And this is Frederick. He is Danish and has lived in New Zealand for six months. Having finished his report, he gets a book. Kids are encouraged to read a lot from early on. Frederick's father works in New Zealand. His mother stays home. Being a teacher herself, she studies the education system and compares it to the Danish one she comes from. If you try to describe the biggest difference between the Danish school system and the school system here, where does that lie? It can be absolutely seen that the teacher has a very big knowledge of the students already from the moment where they meet in school, because they have done a lot of work to know the family. På den måde, at forældrene er velkomne i skolen om morgenen, og man møder hinanden der og taler om, hvordan barnets skolegang er. Men at læreren også kender til det individuelle barn, og præcis kender det individuelle barns behov. Og det, synes jeg, er en meget stor forskel. Og så øh, tager man simpelthen og skræddersyrer en, en indsats øh, på det enkelte barn. Og med det gør øh, forældrene utrolig kraftigt. Og involvere hele familien i her og nå til målet. The close contact to the parents is a strong element in linking the school to the world around the school. Parents participate in the teaching process in more than one sense. Foreign language children get a helping hand or parents may participate in decorating. A sleet. Do you want one? How long time do you normally spend at school? About five hours a week. And then in that time I make resources on a Monday and then I parent help on a Tuesday. What is it to make resources? Um, if teachers have lots of artwork they want mounted or books mending or any, any jobs that they find it hard to fit into their day, we'll do that for them. When the close cooperation between school and parents works so well, and the whole system is so closely integrated, it is a consequence of the system's whole philosophy of teaching. We are at the Teachers' College in Auckland. These young people are being trained to become kindergarten teachers. The teacher is concerned about teaching children, not concerned about teaching mathematics or about science or about social sciences. That the whole focus is on the child and helping that child to learn. It is it's quite a different approach from being a teacher to being a, a person who is helping children to learn. These will become primary school teachers. Both groups are taught in the same place and along the same principles. Whether they will teach in kindergarten or school. I think they learn from each other, there's no question about that. I think the staff learn from each other and they learn the importance of a curriculum which is seamless in our terms. That means that it runs right from early childhood right through to year 13 um, in schooling. And I think that there's been a lot of learning and cooperation from people as they work together. But the school is not the teacher's school. The school is the children's school and their parents have the power. The power to elect five to seven members of the school board. The principal has his or her seat and the teachers have one seat. This board, controlled by the parents' representatives, has the full economic, judicial and pedagogical responsibility. School is free, but the schools have to generate extra funds. The government does provide a basic budget, determined on the basis of how many children, the affluence of the area, the ethnic composition of the students and the teachers. The Education Review Board controls and evaluates the individual school boards. We go out to review the schools to evaluate the quality of the education that they're providing and to make sure that they're being managed in the way that they're expected to be managed. The board's specially educated staff 
inspect schools in general every third or fourth year. They interview the board, check the administration, check curriculum, interview the teachers, sit in on classes, interview the pupils and evaluate whether the teachers live up to the charter worked out by each school. We write reports on the schools uh, and in the reports we include recommendations for change and we point out to the boards who manage the schools the sort of things that they must do in order to bring the schools up to standard. Do you think all schools are happy to meet them? Not always. Why not? Uh, uh, some schools see the review officers the big brother type of approach where they're coming in to be to be looked at and to to maybe find fault with. If school boards fail to follow directions from the review board, the Minister of Education can fire them. The minister is located in Wellington. It was here in 1989 that the Labour Party turned the established ways of New Zealand upside down, including the education system. What did you want to obtain by changing it? Uh, to focus on uh, the kind of world that young people will enter into, much more technological, much less the old uh, times when you left school and did three years of tertiary study and you were set up for life. You teach people the skills that they need to be able to learn rather than the facts that they know when they leave school so that they can continue to absorb facts long after they leave school because they've got the right skills. What did you do first thing when you got there? I can't wait to go to school again. But what did you do today, like when you got there? What did the teacher make you do first thing? Did you do stories? Or busy. Busy. Made me get busy. And I like getting busy. Now Michaela has been to school for a few days. How is it going? <laughs> the first day was a breeze. We were, we, Terry said to me, I can't believe I wonder how many parents have it so easy sending the child to school for the first day because it was so good. But yesterday when I took her, she had a little moment where she was crying and she had no friends and <clears throat> she didn't want to go to school. It, it'll take her a week or two, but once she makes friends, and those are the most important things for children, to have friends where they go. And mm. once she's done that and adapted, I think it'll be, be fine. Yeah. Hi, Hi. 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 Michaela gets her goodnight story. While in Europe, kids are waking up and on their way to a very often very different school. Hidden in the trees, the last amazing animal in this Amazon ABC. We're aiming at citizenships, we're aiming at a future, we're aiming at an, a world of employment, we're aiming at an international sort of education. Um, all of those things are aiming and we're trying to build an education system which allows people to contribute to the best of their potential in a, in a global world. If I was a child who was being told every day what I couldn't do rather than what I could do, I don't think I'd want to go to school. Night. Good night, Mum. Night, sweetie. <laughs>